That's on the road, dude. Really. <laughs> We are here at Don Bosco Online Radio Nigeria Lagos Studio and uh, it's the feast of St. John Bosco. Not yet the feast, actually we are moving towards the feast of St. John Bosco and it's going to be on the 31st and in view of that we are going to be having some programs that we have called or a program we have called dialogue with Don Bosco. So we are going to dialogue with the different aspects of Don Bosco's life. So in the studio with me, I have Jude, I have Rita, I have Miss Soma, I have Akin John Bosco, and I have Joy. I am your host, Tony Mabio. Don Bosco lived in Becky in uh, Italy, a very remote area in the Piedmont uh, uh, region. And uh, his mother was an illiterate. She not go to school. But she knows a lot about the sacred history she knows about the gospel but in her heart so she like when they were teaching them in their own way those days she used to cram she used to put it in her so that it remained there so for don bosco when they were growing up they were very very far from where the priest was so she was the one that was now transferring this information to her kids so that is how the boss who came to know a lot of things about the church, about prayer, about the gospel and all that. So, according to Don Bosco, he says that it was the mother or his mother that taught him how to go to confession. In fact, his first confession was the mother that prepared him. Don Bosco, what influence does the mother have on Don Bosco in the area of prayer? So, Joy. Okay, if I may say a little about it, I think prayer is, like you said, it's a dialogue. For me, prayer is a dialogue. I, I don't believe that prayer is something that you just, you know, you just keep talking and talking and talking and nobody sleeps. When a child is born, it's believed that a child is born with a blank state of mind, that's tabula rasa. And, you know, when the child begins to grow, the child learns from environment and learns from society. And obviously, the first person the child will come in contact with will be the mother. And whatever that mother impacts on the child, as the child grows, is what the child will grow with. So if a mother impacts prayer um, on a child and, and enforces it, you know, that child begins to become self-conscious of the spiritual ways of life. Because I always tell people that life is very spiritual, even if we... We are mortal beings, we are, we, are, we are physical beings and all life is very spiritual. Anything that has happened in uh, the physical would have definitely manifested first in the spiritual. So yeah, the child is going to you know, become self-conscious of the spiritual, spiritual um, aspect of life you know, from what the mother teaches the child. In African society, when um, a child is believed to be a witch, so yes, if a mother impacts that knowledge, that idea of prayer on a child, that child would, you know, grow with it and become more spiritual. So Rita. that's my take on that. Okay, what I'm going to say is similar to what Jude and Joy has said. Still on the aspect of socialization. When the child comes in, it's like a first interest with the family. So yes, this is where we, um, we see the... Um, Wake up in the morning, say your prayers. If you're about to go to bed, say your prayers as a family. So yeah, the child like internalizes these values, and it grow, it grows up with it. So basically, the prayer life of the child is more of the responsibility of the family, most especially the mother, because there's a connection between the mother and the child. Yeah, yeah Miss Oma. Okay, so similar to what she has already said. No, it's the response. Why are you guys always saying similar to your own now? Um, no, it's actually still <laughs> almost the same. Yes, it's consideration. You know, anyway. in summary, we're all saying the same thing that the mother has a great impact in the prayer life of the child. That's the summary of everything we're saying. So, you know, when a child first, when he starts coming up, he's like, how that puts it? Your spirituality first starts from the family 
and your mother is the one mainly most of the time your mother is the one that has to groom you you know do this do that she teaches you how to pray she teaches you how to do this and then as time you not learn your own you know you learn to do things you learn how to pray on your own but first your mother has to tell you okay this is how you're going to go about your prayer life you know you have to attend mass she has to groom you well you know you have to pray as a family and your mother that binds that that spirituality most of the time mm. she's the one that helps him great so. great so oh yeah for those people who say hello dear mama <laughs> <laughs> I so uh akin alpha yeah my own is kind of different yeah it's the fact that everything centers in the area of mom but i got my kind of spirituality from my, I started with my grandma, because where I was born, it was taken there, my mom was there, and I was brought down to grandma, and I started so little, but everything comes from my grandma. Anything about prayer, I learned from her, then with the help of Don Bosco, the spirituality continues very what do you mean by Don Bosco? Like... <laughs> Actually, then, let me say, this is my own story, it comes in. Uh, then, I would go with my mom, uh, with my grandma rather, to a church then. But I, I didn't, I don't even have, I don't, I, I would like going sick for just going sick. I was very little, but I do not understand. We didn't pray together because of our business or what she goes for uh, all these trader stuff. She would travel far, my dad would go come back on weekend. But where Don Bosco comes in now is, I found my way to Dumbo School and from there I began to go into the spiritual because anything we do there we need to start with prayer, we need to do everything, even we end in prayer. In the middle they will stop us, we we'll pray. Oh you mean Dumbo School? Dumbo School. The oratory, yes, yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. okay. That's our okay, moment. that is just to tell you that uh, Jude grew up in the Don Bosco. No, no, not Jude. Uh, I mean, sorry, uh, Don Bosco. Jude is uh, <laughs> Jude that uh, somewhere else. <laughs> I grew up. I grew up with the Dominicans. With the Dominicans, yeah. Why uh, Akin grew up with the with Don Bosco? Where did I grow up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Even myself too. Prayer life, I mean, began from home. And uh, I used to remember those days though, if it is time for this family prayer in the morning and uh, we are still sleeping. Hmm. That time when they sleep they sweet <laughs> well well. Like five five four thirty. You just hear say, oh yeah. Oh. Time for prayer. And if you are still doing, still stretching, you don't hear one for your head or for your <laughs> bum bum, you're like, oh yeah, let's go. And things like that. But actually, it helps. It helps. So that moves to the next question. Uh, looking at Don Bosco, definitely what Don Bosco has said about the mom and all that means that they were praying together as a family. So, what were your experiences of praying together as a family? Um, my experience praying together as a family was really a nice one. My dad did it very well. I'll, I'll give kudos to my dad too. It's not only mom, parents in general. My dad did real good. Because I remember then when we were still very much younger. Every 4 a.m. It's just as if that is his timing. Once it's 4, 4 o'clock, there is this whole song on a very low key. You know, you'll be enjoying this song, but he's only trying to tell you that, babe, time for guys, it's reach. time for you to wake up, arise and cry, because it's getting close to when you're supposed to open your eyes, because everybody must be awake, maximum, 4.30, we're all awake. So he starts from that 4, he starts playing that song, you know, that thing already makes you even feel happy that, man, I need to wake up, let me even see that. Then, I guess this song too came out, the uh, Akanchawa. That song also came out, so he will always play that song for us. And then, as as it progresses, he keeps increasing the volume. He keeps increasing the volume till it will get to the level that you cannot bear it anymore. He won't even come and wake you up. You'll be the one to wake up yourself and start singing along. So that was how he was able to make us have the spirit of you know coming together because we want to sing that early morning. And you know we are seven girls in my house, so everybody wants to show their voice. <laughs> everybody wants to show that they have voice. You know you just wake up, you start singing with whatever party that is going on, it's not if it's probably blending or not blending, you just shall sing, you have voice, I can sing. 
so that is how we do we did it when we were much younger then and then once it's 4 30 everybody come together we say our father from there when well, they begin to tell you okay you are the one to lead today that's one thing that scares me a whole lot when they say it's my time to pray like you're the one leading prayer today that thing scares me a lot <laughs> you know i'll tell them i can't pray i can't pray but eventually you still see me i'll still say even if it's my father god bless my mother amen bless my father amen everybody just keeps saying amen before you mention the whole names around you mm -hmm. you are done praying so by the way by the way who not doing as in no, no day. Yeah. So we do not do no day. Oh no day, we try. <laughs> wow. Okay, so Jude. Yeah, so um praying as a family it was it was my it was my mom that you know did most of it. My dad is late already, so it was my mom that like you know did everything. She would shout. She has a very loud voice, and if you don't wake, she'll come to your room and start praying in your room. So you know it's time to to wake up and pray. But it was fun. For it definitely, very early in the morning, everyone would be lazy, somewhat to stand up to get up from bed, especially when it's a very cold morning. But along the line, when we start praying, it it progresses. It becomes you know interesting that's when you start remembering your personal problems your personal petitions and all that and you just want to be very active with that so it was fun we we had days where we did different kind of prayers there was the time we prayed the rosary there was the time we prayed the divine mercy and there was the time we did the normal traditional prayer you know so it was it was fun it was good my sister too if my mom doesn't wake us up my twin sister would wake up. She's a prayer warrior. <laughs> she will make sure she wakes the house. Wow. So yeah, it was it was fun. Wow. So Rita, how far? Okay, my experience was um, we don't usually miss the morning and the night session, but most of it came from the night because in the morning, but it's all about their business and all. So we can just hear our individual prayers. But in the night now, you can just be on your own. Before you know it, you're hearing bag bag bag. What's happening? Time for prayer. <laughs> so we'll come out, see our prayers. And most of the time it was like a competition. Like the person will pray today, the other person will sing tomorrow. So we always play to each other that no, okay, it's your turn to pray, it's your turn to sing. So that was how we grew up and up to now it's still like it's still there. Wow, great. Yes. This one, man. Yeah, okay, so my my own experience, okay, my family. I don't know, since when we were small, you know, it's actually it's actually my mom, mainly my mom. She, I don't know, she used to shout. Once she shout, like, is everybody just stand up? You cannot be sleeping. <laughs> I don't have to explain it. Then you know, you rumble, you come, when we come together. Ah, God, if you are still, you know me, I know myself very well. My sister doing prayer. As I'm sleeping, she just knock my head like this, you know, for me to wake up. So, you know, as I was growing up, you know, it became part of me. I became used to it. I learned how to pray. But, and I give kudos to her because I know she should not discipline me like that. <laughs> I don't know. Great, great. Aki, how far? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love the stories. Uh, like, it's touching. It touched yeah, touch me. me. <laughs> I, 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 I wish say my mama we got that day like we were different. She was outside. My dad was in Ruba, so the distance we didn't grow together. And my dad would need to go to work very early. I I, I won't even know when he goes, except my grandma. My mama don't go market. I grew, the, the, the thing I enjoyed as a family from my dad was he would take me, drop me at Don Bosco Junction. We would go to his work. I would go for money mass. That's the only. That's the kind of enjoyment. Five o'clock, my dad would wake me up. 5.30, I go for mass. It doesn't even go, but I'll go. But I pray for family. That's the kind of enjoyment mm -hmm. me I have. Yeah, and the great. team helped me a lot. And that is why <laughs> people call me Don Bosco. Because everything, everything, Don Bosco, even the fact that I'm here now, is still Don Bosco. Yeah. So that's the kind of fun, the, the, the enjoyment. That's why you took the name Don Bosco. <laughs> Sorry, makes sense. Yeah. But now, the thing is that, now, you know, we are no longer talking about Don Bosco, right? We, okay, we, are, we got the whole clue from Don Bosco, Don Bosco yes. and, but we are looking at our own present situations today. So do people still pray together? I mean, do families still pray? Is it a value <coughs> for us? Do we still pray together as family? It's a very big value. value. Like today? Yes. Okay. 
it's a very big one because with the way we are seeing situation around us this period children doing things that even their great grandfather did not try it's only prayer <laughs> that can actually bring them back to normal so if you do not bring your kids together while they are very tender and start teaching them the word of God telling them don't steal it's also part of prayer when you after praying for them that God help me not to steal you've actually prayed God help me not to steal then you sit tell that child don't steal stealing is a sin that you know you say it as prayer you also say it as a communication so that is the way you can train them to make them better if you just leave children of these days and say okay to your tent oh Israel watch that child in the next two years the display that child will give to you you will know that uh, there is something really really wrong so in this present situation in this present um, time and era prayer is something that is really really still needed and yes I live with my brother and his family I still do that with the children he has three boys and a girl I know how easy it is for me to cope with them but I, I had that great opportunity to imbibe this into them during the time of the COVID. So that COVID period, people were saying like, uh, it didn't favor, but I guess it really did favor my brother, his kids precisely, because I had enough time with them in terms of prayer. Once we wake in the morning, they know the first thing we are doing is prayer. After prayer, we do cartoon. After cartoon, they will now come to either little, little assignments, spelling this and spelling that before breakfast and every other thing. But because prayer is really, really needed prayer is needed I myself I don't joke with it personally I'm still undergoing through some prayer sections so prayer Great. is needed so anybody wants to talk about that yeah well I don't know about you know individual families but I think it's uh, the, the world has changed the world has evolved and everyone is like you know very getting very busy with so many things so um, I feel like Many families right now probably don't um, engage in that morning prayer or evening prayer because they have to get you know busy with one or two activity. But for my family, we still we still engage in that. No matter how busy you are, there's always a time to wake up. You know, even if you you have to leave the house by five, you wake up by three to pray. You have to come into your day. You know, into the hands of God. So, for my, for my family, we still we still imbibe that culture. I don't know about any other family, but I feel like the world right now is so busy that people don't even do it again. Yeah. So, who wants to talk about that again? Rita, Ben Soma, Akin. So, actually, similar to what he has said. Yeah. So, in your family, you still yeah, we still, still pray. We still pray. But you don't. But generally, I still feel like, like you said, mm -hmm. people are still busy. Because these days, especially for children that are now grown, mm -hmm. <coughs> and they get to like travel, go on with their lives and all, they don't know that pray together as a family. Mm -hmm. Although we still have WhatsApp as a platform for praying together. Sometimes we do that so when our siblings are apart and all. But these days, people are busy. Especially in the morning, that morning prayer, like everybody just does like individually. Some people forget to do it. Yeah. So it's no longer like before that everybody come together in the morning, let's pray and all of that. So that's oh, great. You know, I think um, what I think, yeah, what my dad told, what my dad and my mom, they came to an agreement that, you know, it's not every time. Sometimes my dad goes out very early and it's only I and my mom. Sometimes, you know, things happen. Okay, they'll tell us that if they're not around or if they don't have that time, we should go for morning mass. So like recently, that's what we started doing. You know, if they're not around or if there's no that time, we'll come for morning mass, you know. Because my dad is always saying that that's the highest prayer. So we try and make it for morning mass. It'll be like, did you pray this morning? Did you go for morning mass? Something like that, you know. We seem to change it, like, recently, that was said, because of time. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, about the family prayer. <coughs> now, so a lot of stuff out there, like, the youth, many of them has gone out from home. <laughs> they don't face the world. And they are, many of them are carried away. They are not even, except maybe if they come home, they will join the family, they will do their prayers. But to me, it's better if you are not with your family, do your prayer and try to communicate with them. You can check on them. Ah, dad, you hope you've prayed, hope you've said your prayer. Oh, maybe provincial. Last week, my dad called me. He has a very tough code. Daddy, did you pray? That's what I told him. He said, Oh, 
Okay, let me do my prayer. And a few hours later, I said, hey, John, I'm good. That's what they told me. I think the communication, even if we can't pray together, let's talk to them. Mm. And that's uh, Wait, that was a good one. One sweet thing I, I do enjoy about prayer is I believe that there's no how you pray as a family together that you hold grudges against yourselves. It's not possible. You can't be carrying this heavy burden in your mind that you're still praying. You won't you won't flow. So and the good way for me to start prayer is praises first. So when you start that praise, it's already clearing off whatever body you think you have in your mind. And by so doing, if it's something that you have something, or probably you have, you're not happy with your your sibling, you will definitely want to either say it out or you know just let it go. So prayer is one thing that I believe that unites family too much. It makes you, it it bonds this, it brings this bond amongst families. So good. So you guys, the way you are talking, so you mean it means that you see value family prayer coming together so which means that when you find when you get your own families that it, that is a value that you are going to transport into your own family and things like that wonderful wonderful so what are your last words like uh, what do you want to say to young people out there the Bosco youth youth all over the world like now we said uh, a lot of young, young people are out there and uh, some of them are carried away by the things of the world and all that so what's we are all young people here <laughs> also yeah so well, I, 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 say, I love you young man, yeah, to young man own, yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want to say to young yeah, people yeah, last yeah. word to me i, I would <clears throat> use myself as a case study also. yeah like sometimes i would forget my it happens most times but i don't miss my son, even in the bus, after I left home, I would do my sign of the cross to make sure. Oh, I, le I, I forgot about my prayer. Let's just, I would just do the sign of the cross, maybe one word. I was chipping some things. I would say personally, deep down within me, then I begin. No matter what we do, let us pray. Just prayer is the key. Let's pray. That's prayer my is the key. key. <laughs> Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayer and ended with prayer. Prayer is the master key. Nice one. So, last words, uh, Miss Oma. Oh, my last words. You know, sometimes you might forget, but whenever you remember, just try and pray. And I feel like you should just place it on yourself that you know every morning when you wake up you want to be like the first thing you're going to do is pray to so community like just try and you know sometimes it takes self-discipline it takes you know you have to remember but just yeah. try to like you know exactly. continue to practice it and you get it so rita okay my one is first of all should not forget where we came from or where we are coming from mm -hmm. actually those that came from a really prayerful background although some do have the opportunity to come from a prayerful background then yeah. you should also believe that it can actually start with you in as much as your family did not have that trait of like okay let's do this let's pray like that it can start from you definitely so you can be the first then passing over to the next generation to come to come, come. so that's it great yeah so my take on uh, what i'll say is life is a battleground physical and spiritual you know so for you to meet up with the spiritual battle you have to pray the moment you are born almost everyone is after you some way or the other so you just have to pray many times when you forget to pray or many times when you see something has happened to you like a miracle or something it's because of you know the prayers you have done in the past it's like a power bank that just comes when you disrespect it or when you need it most so yeah it's good to always pray just remember life is a battleground and for you to fight it spiritually you have to pray great and joy well, the thing i have to say is no matter what we do in life, we should always remember God first. Because this whole prayer we're talking about, it is God we are communicating for. So if you always have God first in your heart, definitely you will not forget to pray. Nice one. Great. And from me to you and to all the young people out there, prayer, as I say, is the key. Communication with God, dialogue with God. It's, um, it's a way that you, you commit yourself. Um, knowing the fact fully well that you are not alone in the world and there is a bigger power that is over you hovering around and you are saying okay I respect you I know that you are there I have this need 
and all that do it for me and all that so guys ladies gentlemen this is the end of our the first episode of dialogue with Don Bosco and this one is on prayer so catch you and we're going to be talking about other things other time so bye and have a wonderful bye. day bye bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye.